Good morning, Red Fives. I hope you are well. Today is Friday, which means we do NST today. Okay, so I want you to please open up your books on page 73. Now, I want you to remember you have a sort of like a class test. It's this page 72 you need to do on a separate piece of paper. It is open book, so you can go and have a look at the answers. But I need you to um, please do it on a separate piece of paper and um, take a picture of it and send it to me as quick as you can. Okay. Starting off, in the previous topic, you learned that metals are useful because of their special properties. People make objects from metals because metals are strong, shiny, malleable, and ductile. Metals are also melt at high temperatures. In this topic, you will learn about these properties and also about how we use metals in everyday life. Now, you need to do activity one. Um, you need to have a look at this picture. Why are some of the metal pieces being attracted to the magnet but not others? Number two, are all metal attracted to magnets? Are non-metals attracted to magnets? Do magnets only attract small pieces of metal? Do magnets only attract other magnets? And where are magnets used in everyday life? Good, let's go to the next page. Other properties of metals. Now let's quickly use, um, read our key words. Magnetic, attracted to magnet. Attracted means pull towards. Tarnish means when a shiny metal gets a dull appearance. Corroded is when a metal breaks down. Okay. Metals are useful. Metals are very useful in everyday life. Metal objects are used for many different jobs. You learned it. You learned in topic six that metals have special properties and that people use metals because they're of these properties here are some examples of properties of metals metals conduct heat if you put one end of the metal rod into a fire it won't be long before you can feel the rod becoming hot in your hand this is because the heat passes along the rod we say um, the metal rod conducts the heat metals are good conductors of heat if a pot has a metal handle, it may be too hot to pick up when it has been on the stove. This is why most pots have wooden or plastic handles. We make pots and pans from metal because the metal conducts heat. Okay, now you need to do activity two as well. Observe heat being conducted. We cannot see heat, but we can see the effect of heat. In this activity, you will need to see the effect of heat as it passes along the handle of a pot. So I want you to... Um, try and do this activity. It's basically just a, a viewing activity to see. It's like a little experiment to see how heat is conducted. If you don't have um, some of these things, ask your mom just to basically, um, when she cooks, have you there with her and sort of see the heat, the water boiling or whatever she's boiling in a pot to see how the heat um, is conducted through the metal. Okay. So you will need a pot with a long metal handle, a candle, a heat source, like small gas stove or electric stove or fire. Light a candle and drip some wax every 5 cm along the pot handle. Allow the wax to harden and put some water in the pot and heat it on the stove. Watch what happens to the wax as the pot heats up. Now you can only do this if you um, have these available and if your mom allows you to. Um, but it's basically what's going to happen is the wax is going to melt because you can then see how the heat is conducted. Mm -hmm. But once again, I want you to, if you're not able to do this activity, just ask your mom to show you how she cooks something. So, so that you can see the water boiling and sort of not touch the pot, but feel really close to it, how it becomes warm. Okay. Now page 75, magnetism and metals. Some metals are magnetic. When you bring certain metals close to a magnet, the metals are attracted to the magnet. This means they stick to the magnet. Metals that are attached to magnets are magnetic. This does not mean they are magnets themselves. If a piece of metal is not magnetic, it will not attract to the magnet. Iron and steel are the most important magnetic metals. Nickel and cobalt are the only two other metals that are magnetic. All the other metals are and all the non-metals are non-magnetic. That's really important to know. So, test metals of magnetism. Activity 3 is also a, sort of like an experiment activity. I want you to please try and do it if you can. Um, if you can't, it's still fine. Just try and write as much as you can. Okay. So, from what I say. 
In this activity, you will test some different metal objects to see if they are attracted by a magnet. If you can find a magnet, perhaps a fridge magnet or something like that. You will need a magnet, a number of metal objects like paper clips and things like that, preferably made from different metals. So if you only have one metal, it's still fine. If you can use like a, a fridge magnet and a paper clip. So hold the magnet in one hand. With the other hand, hold the other, other objects you are testing next to the magnet. If you can feel the magnet force, or if the object sticks to the magnet, you know that it is magnetic. Test all the objects in the same way. So, this um, table is in your purple file already done for you, so just check. And then you can just take a teaspoon um, and any other objects, at least five objects, different objects, and if it's magnetic or not, just tick. Okay, and what happens if you touch a paper clip to another paper clip that is already touching a magnet? Most drawing pins look like brass. Brass is not magnetic. Why do you think drawing, drawing pins are attracted to a magnet? Will your magnet attract a nail through a piece of paper, a wooden ruler, and your hand? So that will depend on how strong the magnet is. Right. Okay. Let's go to page 76. Some of your results from activity 3 may, may be different. The spoon you use may have different amounts of iron in them. Safety pins may um, may be made of different metals. Your 5 cent and 50 cent coins should not be attracted to the magnet because of the copper and bronze on the outside of the coin is not magnetic. But the steel inside is. Your 2 rand coins should be attracted to the metal, to the magnet, because the copper on the inside is not magnetic, but the nickel on the outside is. Metal rust and, or tarnish. Nearly all metals are affected by the air and water. Air makes the metal change. All metals start off bright and shiny, but in the air they go dull after a few weeks. For many metals like copper, aluminium and zinc, this dull layer is fairly thin. We say the metals tarnish or corrode. Gold stays shiny because it does not corrode. Silver gets a blackish layer which needs to be cleaned off. And you usually get jewellery cleaner for that because jewellery is usually made from silver. Iron corrodes very easily. When iron corrodes, we say it rusts. Iron is the only metal that rusts. The iron rusts reddish brown and breaks down into small bits. Iron objects that rust are badly damaged and weakened. Metal alloy that contains lots of iron like steel also rusts. How to stop iron and steel from rusting? To stop iron objects from rusting, we have to protect them from the air and water. We can stop iron objects from rusting by coating them in plastic, painting them, coating them with another metal that doesn't rust, or coating them with oil or grease. Okay. Now, you need to do activity four. Once again, this is sort of like an experiment activity. So if you're able to, you can. It's not a trench smash, smash. If you can't, I want you to just at least... Um, question three is another table that will be in your purple file. Paste it in and try and do it. Okay. Or just tick off as best as you think the answer would be. Good. You will need different metal objects, such as different coins, iron fillings, nails, drawing pins, paper clips... Paper clips coated with plastic, wire, brass screws, roofing tiles, plastic containers, and water. So put the metal objects in the plastic container and cover with tap water. Copy the table below. You don't have to do that because it will be in your book. And then make a tick when you first see signs of rusting. You can use more ticks to show how much of the object is rusted. So is it more rusted than it was the previous day? So, um, try and do this activity as best as you can. We will be having a discussion about it for the kids that maybe are allowed to. Um, if nobody can do it, we will be doing this in class as well because we have the materials at school. So, these experiment types of things we will be doing at school if you are not able to do them now. Okay. So, then just do four for me. Make a list of the object that rust. Make a list of the object that did not rust. And write down the names of five everyday iron objects and how they are protected from rust. Good. Now, let's quickly go to skill focus. This is the lo uh, last thing we have to do. Um, activity five. Control variables. In grade 4, you learned how to carry out a fair test. You learned that a test is fair when we test everything in the same way. To make a test fair, we must identify all factors that may affect the result. We call these factors variables. Keep all the variables the same. Change only one variable to see what effect it has. When we decide which variable to keep the same and which variable to change, 
we say that we control the variable. So basically what this means is, let's say we have a variable of, let's say this activity that you had to do, where you put all of the um, different metal things in a, a plastic container and put water in. Now, some of these objects might not um, be fully covered with water. Some might be fully covered. Um, let's say you put the, the plastic container somewhere where it's half shade, half sun so all of these factors will affect it and will affect the result because they won't have an equal opportunity to show um, how they react in these situations so you need to cover everything with water and you need to put it in either sun or shade okay so now activity five use an everyday example to show how to control variables suppose you want to investigate how exercise affects your sleep for three days, you do as little exercise as possible, and for the next three days, you do as much exercise as possible. What factors of your invest investigation can change? Now, this is just something for you to, um, this is just an activity. This is just an example. You do not have to do this. Okay. So, one, what factors of your investigation can you change? Here are some examples. How long you exercise, the difficulty of the exercise, the, ki the kind and amount of food you eat, the people you talk to during the day, what you wear during the day, where, whether you your bedroom light is on or off when you sleep. Do you understand that those are the variables that need to be the same on each day? Because each of these variables can affect the outcome. Then two, which variable might affect your results? Identify um, in this which one will, which of these, not just one, will affect the results. And what do you know? Look at the factors that may affect your results. Focus on just one factor at a time. In a simple sentence, write down the question you are going to answer in the investigation. So I want you to have a look. How are you going to solve this problem? Okay, so you have the problem of uh, the amount of food that you're going to eat. How are you going to solve this problem? Are you going to keep track of the amount of food that you're going to eat? What you're going to eat? Healthy or unhealthy? And then number four, which variable do you need to control? Look at the questions you are trying to answer. You must change only one of the variables. All the other variables must stay the same. List the variables you identify in question two that may um, that you must keep the same during your investigation. So once again, that's just the same thing. Look at the investigation. What should you keep the same? What is allowed to be different that won't affect the outcome? Okay, so guys, that is all for NST. Um, I hope this helped you. And please uh, remember I'm available on WhatsApp or you can... Wait until Zoom where we will discuss everything again. Good luck.